All right, guys, welcome back to Pizza Garage. Now that we have the engine all apart, we have to start inspecting our parts. First, we're going to start with the parts we're going to be taking to the machine shop. I got to get those to the machine shop right away. Let's take a look at those first. Now, the first thing we're going to do is talk about the block. The block goes to the machine shop, and they're going to do several things for me. First, they're going to look at each cylinder. They're going to measure how round they are and measure the TIR or the total indicated runout to find out how round they are. They're going to find the biggest piston hole, and they're going to bore out all the cylinders to match the biggest one so they'll all be exactly the same. Then what they're going to do is they're going to replace the cam bearings and as you can see, I'll see if I can get a good shot here, uh, the cam bearings are fairly worn as expected. So the cam bearings will be replaced. They will put those in. The other thing they will do is check the deck surfaces. Now they have to check the deck surface to make sure that both of the deck heights are the same and what they will do is they will measure from the deck surface to the center of the crankshaft and they'll see what the deck surface is to make sure they're both the same distance. They'll shave one down if one's higher than the other to make sure they're both the same distance. They'll also make sure that they're flat, square, this way and this way so that we have a nice square surface for the head to sit on. They'll dip it and clean it so I don't have to worry about cleaning it so they'll clean it all off. They'll replace all the core plugs. They'll take out all the plugs out of the engine and they will replace all of those. So the block is a, is a big main component going to the machine shop. Uh, so the block we will have to machine out 30 thousandths oversize on each of the cylinders which as a result of that will require us to get new pistons. So we'll be replacing the pistons with oversized pistons for the right size bore. Next part going to the machine shop is the crankshaft and what the machine shop will do is they will polish down all the mains and all the pins here because there are significant ridges. They're pretty high. So they're going to have to grind this down. They're going to have to grind this down and make it all even all the way across and what they will do is they will get bearings to match the diameter of the main then they will uh, clamp it up or they'll put it in the block they'll torque down the, the main bolt to make sure that they have the right parts in there then they'll check the line board to make sure it's all straight so the crank is going to be reworked all the mains and pins will be polished, ground and polished, and then they'll balance it to make sure it's all ready to go back okay, in. Okay, so we're at the JNL Performance Engines with my good friend Paul Lipke. He's the guy that I tell everybody to call when they need help with engines. And here's the crankshaft. And what we're going to be doing here is grinding, polishing down the rods uh, 30. Was that 30, 30? 30 thousandths off the, the uh, rods and then 20 off the mains. This is the worst one. You can see the the pretty big lip on this one so these are all going to be ground down so the crank is all cleaned up and this will be the last to be done right now the uh, heads in the block are in the uh, oven so we'll come back to that when he's finished next is the cylinder heads the machine shop is going to take apart the cylinder heads they'll take the valves out take them all apart they'll inspect the valve guides make sure the valve guides aren't leaking I suspect they are because it looks like they were leaking into the uh, intake into the exhaust. It looks like they were just leaky so they'll do that. We'll put new springs in, they'll check the valves, check the seats, they'll clean the entire head, they'll make sure the surface is flat, they'll, they'll uh, do the uh, valve seats, they'll take out the valves, do the valve job, grind the valves, grind the seats, and, the seat, and these seats need to be replaced to replace the seats. So we'll have the heads m machined, cleaned, and all the parts replaced complete. Now even though the, um, the seats were hardened, uh, hardened seats, you can see by looking at the valve, you can see how the valve is um, dished in there. So we're going to put new valves in. Valves will be replaced and the, the new valve guides will be put in. So we'll have new valve guides, new valves, new springs, and the rest of the hardware that goes along with the valves. I'm also taking the pistons so once the machine shop bores out the cylinders and gets them all the same they can measure the pistons to see if they can be reused but my guess is no because they're so worn out on the side and the rings are so worn uh, also I'm leaving the bearing in there so they can see what the bearing original bearing was and how they can, they can measure that around the pin just so they can see the wear and they can understand that I'm taking the original camshaft so they can put that in there and they can see how the original cam fit in there with the bearings uh, it's not really necessary because they're putting new bearings in I'm putting in a new camshaft but I'm giving them the cam anyway just so they can see the uh, the camshaft and how that wore so those are the main components I'm taking the block the crankshaft the two cylinder heads the pistons and 
the camshaft. Now, um, the one other thing is if they do get new pistons, uh, what they'll do is they'll take these apart for me and put the new pistons on and make sure they'll balance it for me so make sure they're all balanced. So now I can take all these parts to the machine shop. Well, as for the rest of the parts, the push rods, I measured them all, they're all fairly close in length, and since they're adjustable, I had no problem mixing them up. So what I have to do is let these drain, then I'm going to soak them and clean them to get all the carbon and get all the baked off oil off of there. The main bearings, as you can see, these aren't too bad. They're, well, they're worn pretty good. The thrust bearing is in the front. There's a front bearing, second bearing, third, fourth, and a rear bearing. And uh, they are worn fairly significantly, but you could expect to see that in an engine that old with that many miles. The oil pump. Uh, interesting thing with the oil pump here is that you look at the bottom of the screen here, there are some some metal shavings in here and a lot of crap on the bottom here and I'm not really sure what that came from. But I'll be taking the oil pump apart, rebuild that with new gears, put new gears in there. Um, the lifters are they're not that bad. If I look at the bottom of a lifter, it doesn't look like it's worn significantly. But um, I think with a new cam, I'm going to replace the lifters anyway. Just, just to make sure, you know. The exhaust manifolds, I'm going to take these. These will get sandblasted and they'll get blackened uh, back to the original factory type of blackening. The uh, front dampener and pulleys. I will uh, sandblast this and powder coat that, clean it up, get that real nice and clean. Uh, the water pump, same thing. I'll sandblast that and I'll get this uh, whole housing ready uh, to be put back on the engine and paint it all together. The starter's in fairly good shape. Uh, one of these rivets are broke. I'll try and fix that. Um, the valve covers, I will strip those and powder coat those. That color is actually John Deere yellow, so it'll be fairly easy to match. Um, the top cover for the valley, again I'll, I'll clean that and then I will uh, sandblast and get that ready for paint. Same thing with the in intake manifold. Clean it all up, get it ready to paint and uh, sandblast that thing. Front cover for the, for the timing chain, or the timing gears actually. Clean that all up, clean up all the hardware, get that ready so when I put that back on it'll be ready to paint. The distributor, the distributor has a Protronics unit in the, in the top and it was worked on recently so I think uh, at a very minimum I'll clean it up I'll just check the end play of the gear um, there's a, a, a washer in here and some o-rings I'll just check those but I'm pretty sure they come in the gasket set the rocker arm sets uh, these are something I will probably take apart just to make sure that everything's okay with these springs inside here and check the adjustment screws just to make sure everything's alright and neat there um, the other thing is the cam gear. Now the cam gear I told you was a, was a pressed plastic or pressed material that will be replaced with aluminum one. So I checked it. You see the timing mark here. The timing mark right there on the aluminum gear. If I take the keyway and line up the keyway it matches the timing gear that was on there originally so it matches the timing mark. Uh, the gear for the front of the crank is in very good shape. I'll just clean that up and press that back on the crank. And the only thing we have left is the uh, oil pump, I'm sorry, the oil pan. And uh, if I get the sunlight in there just right, the bottom of the oil pan, now this has been sitting for a while so it's been draining, but if you look and you can see the, the sludge in the bottom of the oil pan, this is really thick. So this is a, all the uh, parts of the uh, engine that wore, the rings, grease, all that stuff that would drip down into the oil pan. And this sludge is sitting in there, there's also a lot of some particulate in there which I suppose is just gasket material dried up and it wouldn't end up in the oil pan so the oil pan will have to be cleaned up I'll clean it up scrub it down and have that ready so when I install it I can paint the engine all together so um, I wish that there was more I could say about inspecting the parts uh, but I do rely heavily on the machine shop for their work uh, I take all my engines to JNL Performance and uh, Paul Lipke, he does a great job. He's worked, been, he's probably been working on, he probably worked on 62 engines back in 62. That guy's been working on them forever. He knows them inside and out, and I trust him heavily. So while the, the inspection for me is, is minimal as far as measuring things, when I get the parts back from the machine shop, uh, I will share what measurements we found and what we had to replace. 
So that's about the extent of inspection of the parts for me. What I was looking for for this video was to look at the parts, look at any catastrophic uh, failures. For example, I, I might have, if I had a broken spring, or if I had a crack somewhere, or if something was really broken. That's what I was trying to inspect for with these parts. But all these parts are in great shape. They can be cleaned, sandblasted, and brought back to very new condition. It's just going to take a lot of time to sit and clean all these parts which I will do while the, the other stuff is at the machine shop. It's going to take them two or three weeks to do all that work, so I have plenty of time to do this. So after cleaning up the cam a little bit and looking at it, we made a decision to reuse the camshaft because if it were reground, we run the risk of grinding through the heat-treated surface. And once you do that, you get into the softer part of the metal, and uh, the cam would wear immediately. So. We will use the cam over again, and as you can see, it's really not as bad as I originally thought when I took it out and it was covered with oil. So we'll keep the camshaft. So now that I decided that we're going to keep the camshaft, uh, when you take the lifters out of the engine, you always want to keep them in order. And I just take a, a box, cut it in half, and I label what position they were in, so I know where they go back together. And I also have on the bottom here, you can see this little magnetic strip. A little magnetic strip on there helps so that if it falls over, they don't they don't spill out and uh, get all all uh, screwed up. So you keep in order. Now, since I'm keeping the cam, I have to check my lifters. And you check your lifters simply by taking one of them out. And you can see I have a bright light here. And what I want to do is I'm going to be checking the bottom surface of my lifter here. And when these are made, they're made with a slight dome on the center so that the lifter spins as it uh, goes, goes against the, up and down against the camshaft. And what I'm doing is I'm going to put this flat, flat edge right on the bottom of the lifter and you can see I can't see any light through there. Now if, I, if there was any gap in there you'd see, you'd see, let me see if I can get this, uh, there would be light in there. See how there's light coming through? But as I hold this on and I turn that, that lifter is really, really flat. Let me grab another one here. And I'll take them out right in order and we'll just take a look. Wipe it off so it's clean. And I'll check this lifter. And there's absolutely no light coming under there. So, which means that the lifter is flat. Well, there's a little bit there. Let me wipe off my... Let's try it again. As I rotate, okay. Now, let me see if I can do the... Alright, now you can see that. See that? See that lifter there? See how I'm rocking this back and forth and you can see on the ends? This one has a, a crown on it, almost like it's, it's still relatively brand new. So I can rock this back and forth on the uh, crown, of which you can see the light on each end. I'm rocking it back and forth. It's not, it's not dished. It's not dished this way in. It still has a crown on the top. So this lifter is in very good shape. Take another one, wipe it off, and that one is also in very good shape. Nice and flat. There's no dish in the middle. There's no crown, but it's 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 worn it's worn very very good. A slight, very slight there, but it's not enough to really really worry about. I'm not going to worry about that. So our, the, I'm going to go and check the rest of the lifters, but I'm going to say that they're probably mostly all in good shape. So I can reuse the cam and reuse my lifters. The other thing I'm going to be doing while the engine parts are being uh, machined and cleaned up is I'll clean up the engine compartment. I'll probably sand down, repaint the uh, inner fender well there, clean up the steering gearbox and the uh, power steering unit, transmission member, uh, transmission support, clean that up, uh, the firewall, clean it up as much as possible, possibly touch that up. I'll see what the owner wants to do. Same thing with this uh, fender, inside fender well, I'll do that and then the, uh, the front cross member support, I'll clean it up along with, uh, along with the uh, power steering pump so that this is nice and clean and ready to go when I have the engine built I'll have a nice clean engine bay to put the engine back into. So there you have it guys inspection of all the parts of the engine as it's taken apart. We have some of the parts at the machine shop and I was able to go there and look at the work as they're doing it uh, they're doing a great job. They're working really quick. It only took them a couple days to bake off the parts, bake off the oil, clean them up, sandblast them, get them all cleaned up, and measure some of the parts. So you saw all that, so it's not going to be that difficult. It's still going to take them a couple weeks 
to do the boring of the block, installing all the bearings, doing all the pistons. They got to order the parts. They got to come in, do all the balancing, balancing of the rods, pistons, and uh, balancing the crankshaft after it's ground, and then balancing that whole rotating assembly. That will take some time, uh, and then. Once I get it all back, it's going to take time for me to clean all these parts, paint the engine compartment, and start to put it back together. So, we've gotten to this point. We've got the engine out of the car, we've done a disassembly, now we've inspected all our parts, and now we have to get everything ready to roll, and the next video will be putting the engine back together. And then we will do a dyno video, get it running, put it back in the car, and watch it go back down the road. Um, thanks to all you Studebaker guys who have been contacting me with all your suggestions. I really appreciate it. Uh, even though this engine is very basic and simple, there are some little intricacies that uh, help out knowing in advance. Uh, little things, little, little uh, things that if it helps to know as you're taking the engine apart and getting ready to put it back together. Uh, so thanks a lot for those. Thanks for your comments and text message. I appreciate it. And, and I know the the uh, gentleman who owns this vehicle appreciates all your help. I know a lot of his friends are watching from his Studebaker club. And uh, hopefully we'll have a lot of stupid Studebaker engines after this to build because a lot of guys are interested in having their engines done. So at least now you get to see the process, how I go about it, and, and you'll get to see the finished product. I appreciate all your help. Appreciate all your comments and text messages. Thanks for stopping by Pete's Garage.